Hello, in this video we are going to see how to operate on discount codes using a checkout UI extension. The reason for this video is that recently I saw a comment where someone asked how they could block the application of certain discount codes at checkout during events such as Black Friday. At first I thought that sounded like a perfect scenario for a Shopify function, but then after giving it some thought I realized that it doesn't cover it entirely because even though through functions we can create discount codes that can be applied during those dates, if the discount code already exists and was created by, so by for example, a third-party app, a Shopify function won't be able to block its application. However, even though its name may not suggest it, a checkout UI extension is able to handle situations like that, and that's what we'll see in this video. As I think, it's a side of checkout UI extension that's not covered as much, but that can be useful in some situations. Okay, so next we're going to run npm init Shopify app latest. And I'm going to init the app this way. And I'm going to select a start by adding your first extension. I'm going to go a bit fast here as I have covered this already in a previous video, which I'll be linking somewhere at the top and in the video description. Check that out if you need to. And I'll be back once this finishes installing. Okay, so this finished installing. Now I'll take all of these files out of here. I'll delete this folder. And I'm going to run npm run Shopify app generate extension. With this here, I'm going to select create it as a new app. I'm going to keep this default name, but you can name it however you need to name it. And here I'm going to create a checkout UI. I'm going to name this discount checkout UI. I'm going to select text create and react and I'm going to wait for these dependencies to finish installing. Okay, now that all of this finished installing, I'm going to here, open checkout.dsx, and from here in the console, I'm going to run npm run dev, and I'm going to link this app to checkout UI discounts. Let's wait for this to create the dev server here, and I'm going to press P. And this will open this in the browser. And I'm going to click here. And we get this banner, which is what we have in this folder. Now let's quickly create a discount code and see what we are trying to achieve here. So I'm going to click here, create discount, amount of order. This would be test. Let's give it a 10% discount. And let's save it. Now, if I go here to checkout and try to apply this, this should work. Here I have my discount. And what I want to do is block the user from applying this, basically removing the code and showing the user a message that they cannot apply this discount code through this promotion. Let's suppose we are in the middle of Black Friday and the store already has other discounts. So we don't want the user to, on top of the Black Friday discounts, be applying other discount codes they have. Now we're going to be relying on two hooks for this use discount codes and use apply discount code change. Here I'm going to get the discount codes first. And this will update whenever the user applies or removes a discount code. So I'm going to now use an effect, use effect here. And we are going to put discount codes as the dependency. So whenever this changes, we are going to run this function. If discount codes Let's print it over here first to verify that this is working. I'll save this. Let's refresh. And here, if I go to the console, I see first I have an array with a code test. If I remove this, I have an empty array here. Then I can apply test again. And I will get test again in the array. So this appears to be working fine. Now from the code, Let's say, you supply this code change, right? We have to first create the function here. Apply discount code change. This will be equal to you supply this code change. And this is the function we're going to call. So here, we're going to pass it. We're going to pass the parameters. We're going to apply 
for test. We're going to remove this gun code. Let's save this. And now, you see that the disk on is already not here. What if I try applying it again? It gets applied and removed immediately. You don't even see it there. Let's wait a little. Let's set, for example, uh, set timeout of one second. Let's move all of this over here. If I apply test, you see that it gets removed after a second, but you get a chance to briefly see it over here. So now let's tweak this logic so we show the user a message when we remove this discount code. For this, let's create a state over here with user state. And let's name this has used or has removed the discount code. Set has removed the discount code. And this will start being false. So, if has removed this code, we are going to render this banner over here, else we are going to return no. Because with a checkout UI extension, we can also render nothing, which is what we are doing here. We are going to render the banner only when we've removed the discount code. So over here, let's say, set has removed this code to true. Let's enter here only if this count codes length. And also, let's change the content here to something that makes more sense, like can't apply discount codes during Black Friday. And for the title, we can say ever applying discount code. And the status could be critical. Let's save this. And over here, at first we see nothing, as if there was no check audio extension here. But if I try applying this, after a second, we should get this banner over here. And remember, we are waiting a second because it is inside this set timeout. It is actually pretty immediate, so let's take it out of here. And let's try again applying the discount. And we can see the error right away. Now let's improve this a little by changing where this is going to be rendered. We're going to change these two reductions, render before, and we are going to copy this and also paste it in Shopify extensions toml. We're going to change the target here as well because the target here has to match the target in the DSX file. We have to now restart the extension, which we'll do and open it in the browser. So here I'll press P and click on this. And here we have the extension. Once again, we don't see anything, but if I click on apply, I get my error message over here, right at the top of the discount codes field. So it is closer to where the error is happening. And as a quick reminder to figure out the target, I went to this page over here where I get a quick list of the different targets that I have available over here. I use this one, which is the checkout reductions from the before because it was the one that made the most sense for this extension. And finally, let's make some small improvements over here. Let's start by removing the things we are not using, such as these two, removing this from the top as well. Also, this function is asynchronous, so let's create this async function, handle discount codes. We are going to copy all of this to the top. We are going to call this function, handle discount codes. We are going to await for this. Also, discount codes is an array, so we can do this for counts discount code of discount codes. And we are going to Let's put this inside over here. We loop into this, and this way we don't have to hard code the code itself here. We will use this code code. Dot code. And let's verify that this is still working. So if let's refresh first and here, 
if I try applying test, I get my error right away. And if you want to make the extension a little bit more dynamic, you can use the configurations API to make some parts of the extension editable by the merchant, such as the message in this banner over here, or the start and end date for this discount code removal behavior. All of this was covered in the previous Check Audio Extensions video, so check that out if you want to see how that is set up. And that does it for this video. I know the example is a little bit unusual, as if you wanted to prevent some discount codes from being applied, you could just temporarily disable them, but there are situations where that's not possible or very easy to do, like when you rely on a third-party app to generate the discount codes for you. Nonetheless, I hope you found this video useful or learned something from it, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I'll see you all in the next video.